Hello, my name is Tessa Rosenstein. I'm the exhibition manager at Cynthia Burns Contemporary Art, and I'm joined by Claudia Mengel and Paul Michael Graves, the featured artists in our new exhibition, Beauty and Destruction, on view at 508 West 26th Street from May 19th to May 22nd. This exhibition explores the concepts of beauty and destruction, both independently and their impact on one another. In the lead up to this exhibition, we invited Paul and Claudia to collaborate with one another through a series of discussions, exploring their ideas about beauty and destruction. And because collaboration was such a fundamental part in forging this exhibition, we wanted to invite you here today to discuss a little bit about this process, the work you created, and your experience through it, as well as your first impressions of each other's work, as this is the first time you're seeing it. I thought we could start by talking about the twin pillars of this exhibition, Beauty and Destruction, two different concepts. You both started with very specific ideas from your own personal and professional experiences. I was hoping each of you could talk a little bit about where your ideas of these two concepts started and where they ended up through this process. I had started to paint um, a little plot of land in a very urban oh, area. Oh yeah, this where is my, a great story. My yeah. gallery space is, and every morning when I lifted my window to begin to paint, um, this beautiful little plot of land in an area that had a lot of destruction around it just provided these beautiful gardens. And the gentleman who was uh, tending the land was creating this little plot of beauty, and I started to paint about it. So I did a series of paintings on it, and um, the next spring, he was gone, and nobody ever came back, and there was just pure destruction. Mm -hmm. And there was garbage around, and it just all fell apart. So I started to paint the whole concept of things being destroyed, and not only destroyed in nature, but also destroyed in people not taking care of things and tending to the beauty of something that they could have. Yeah, and then I think we moved from that to talking about the concept of tidying things up and being orderly and organizing things as a concept of beauty. And then seeing your work today, it's like you took that direction. Let's go really colorful. And I and I'm envious that you went that far <laughs> because I went the opposite direction. And I was like, well, let me do something colorful and then also then subdue everything. So two different approaches to beauty and order. And then we got, yeah, we started talking about destruction, which like the opposite of order and pattern. And my, my language is very much about pattern and order and geometry and grids and stuff like that. The concept started out in sort of how we saw it visually but then we started to talk about it a lot in our work. In the process of creating things, you may start out with this idea of something that's very pleasing to you, but then something doesn't work in the painting mm -hmm. and we have to destroy it. But one thing I remember Paul saying, I was talking about destruction in nature because that's what I was viewing and that was my subject matter, but you had talked about uh, your experience of seeing things shattered. Your destruction is so much more intensified than what I was thinking about. And then that whole thing started to ruminate for me that, wow, I have to think about the destruction part in a bigger way, not just in a safe way. We both agreed that there, there needs to be some sort of grounding element, some, some sort of color or figure or something to sort of tether it back down. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it just it gets lost, you know? Yeah. Matisse used black in that way. His red studio would just be kind of a wash of red if it weren't for like little pops of black here and there, you know. And, um, and I see that in your work. I see this use of black or gray or something that, that allows you to appreciate the pastels and the pinks and the blues. And I think the juxtaposition to the color to the black line is something that I often see in nature is that nature draws these lines mm -hmm. in, a lot of times in it's dying out mm -hmm. you see that kind of thing happen organically in it and one of the things that i'm loving about your work so my envy is <laughs> i love the order and then i love the chaos it's both i know oh my gosh and i, I mean, really had to embrace the chaos on this because normally it, i want it to be very like I want, to, I want to show off the order yeah. in, in the work. I'm curious about, is there a consistent symbol or form that you have throughout your work always? The most obvious one would be 
that little square of lines mm -hmm. that I've nicknamed a barcode. That relates more to my use of language and technology in my work. Mm -hmm. And a barcode is a language that hu the human eye cannot read, but a computer reads it and then talks to another computer. So it's this language that is, we understand what it means, but we don't know what information is there until we use a computer. I decided to bring it into the foreground and really let the viewer see it. And so that's the only splash of like pure color that hasn't been obscured in some way or covered up in some way. That would be one symbol. And then I have certain shapes and patterns that sort of have always fascinated me and I always put those in. It's funny, when I look at your work, especially side by side, I got a kind of natural creeping vine impression from your rhizome language in these pieces. It reminds me of vines creeping up a pillar, like nature taking over, reclaiming that same sensibility, that very ordered um, techno-babble language. There was a moment in this whole process where Beauty and Destruction just flew out the window it and did. we just were like, we gotta do our work, we don't know where it's going. It'll come back around full circle, and it did. It did. We just had to trust that it would. This went back to the essence of how I saw beauty when I was young and the simplification that beauty wasn't really complicated. And these are very simplified pieces for me. My work tends to be a little bit more complex. And there was a freedom and a playfulness in them that started to happen for me. I actually started on the big one behind me. So this one pretty much took from January to April, and then the other, the other three came really quickly after yeah. that, because I knew what I was doing. But this was the study. <laughs> oh my gosh. Instead of working small and going big, I did the opposite. <laughs> but you know, once, once I knew what was going on here um, in April, I was like, okay, I showed you that yeah. process. Right? Yeah, and I was like, did. okay, that's the final thing, yeah. and it ties everything together. I definitely so. noticed that a little bit in the piece behind, it, mm. behind us there, with those lines you dabbed on, you said, with a straight edge. They feel a lot more playful than some of the, some of the work we've seen from you before. I was missing the, the art that I was doing years ago that was um, just fun and scratchy and kind of messy and I was like I need to bring some of that messiness back in you know. Yeah. I loved um, being a little familiar with Paul's work but actually not very much. So coming in today to see it relating to each other yeah. was better than I expected. Yeah, I thought I don't know how these are going to talk to each other. These two could get married tomorrow and have yeah. the best marriage ever. Oh, yeah. We sign the diptychs. I agree. These two, I like agree. I just think <laughs> that painting speaks to that painting. And that painting is so involved with this painting, and we never once talked about like what colors are you using? What's uh, give me some hints? No, we never did any nothing. Of that. And it's like we did. From an outside perspective, it seems like you kind of influenced each other as you went. And I'm wondering if you had that same impression as you were going, or now that you're done, if you get that sense of like, oh, I guess that influenced things more than I expected it to. Usually in collaborations, we've either I've either seen people's work during the process or we've actually worked on each other's pieces. This collaboration, I think, was so powerful because it wasn't just about the work, it was about the conversation right. that was behind the work. Yeah. And then it's really important to, which I think Paul and I did, we shared like some breakthroughs we were getting, but we didn't see them visually. Uh -huh. We just verbalized, uh -huh. oh, I'm feeling good about this, or I'm struggling with this. When you're sitting side by side or working on the same canvas, I feel like you're compromising every move and you're not quite sure of the outcome. And I've never had any success with that. <laughs> like I've really, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed this process because I didn't feel, like I felt like I could still be me. I could still do my work and trust that Claudia was gonna do her work and that mm -hmm. it would all come together in the end. What has been really exciting for me is, first of all, seeing Paul's work live, right? So I could see it on a website or in the yeah. library, but to see it live has been so powerful. And we just met today. We haven't, it's been Zoom the I whole know. time. So I know, and look, we and already have a marriage. And everything in person too, yeah. <laughs> The kids are getting along. It's this perfect marriage of opposites. It's this perfect marriage of organic and industrial. So much balance and breadth and energy. I actually took your advice. At the end, you guys both told me the work has to speak for itself. And when we hit a wall with how best we wanted to show it, I finally just said, you know what? The work has to, has to speak for itself. And once we kind of let go of some of the more organizational aspects, it came together really quickly. If we would have seen the work 
visually along the process, I think the paintings would be different. They would have been influenced. I, th I think we would have tried to then force an outcome. And you can't do that. No. You have to let the work tell you what it wants to be. I don't know at what point you had reached that, okay, now I know what's going on. For me, it was like April. I and that was just like, a, <laughs> like two weeks before the deadline, and I was so like, okay, glad. now I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so glad it was April for me. It was February or March. We had a Zoom call, and I started to panic a little, because you know you have a show coming up. You started to talk to me about your process with the architectural papers and the layerings and, oh, yeah. you know, we just started having conversations as artists. It just started pouring out of yeah. me. And I, even the um, mark making with pastel, I haven't worked in pastel in years. Mm -hmm. So just the chalk and the washing away of stuff and the building yeah. up was so fun. You both had a returning to your roots, you with your rhizome series and yeah. you with your pa oh, with pastels. Yeah, Paul was saying that before in yeah. this painting, right? You also kept saying there's no beauty without destruction. There was an observation that was starting to happen where even the things that were left behind and not beautiful in its first pass became really quite interesting as they were destroyed. Yeah, I think it's important not to say that one is good and one is bad, right. like destruction's bad and beautiful is good, but mm -hmm. I mean every act of creation begins with an act of destruction. We have a, before a, a building goes up, we have an excavation, a demolition. Um, mm -hmm. Before a new idea in art is uh, accepted, it has to destroy some convention or some mm -hmm. tradition. And I think with both of us, like personally, we had to sort of break our own rules Mm -hmm. to get to this point, which I think we, you always need to do to keep, keep things fresh. You, know, you have to sort of break the patterns or the processes that you've held on to for so long. And I think for both of us during the past few months, we kind of yeah. broke a lot of our own rules, yeah. which is the hardest thing to do, actually. Yeah. There was a comfort in knowing somebody else was working on the same uh, investigation. We really just gave you guys the parameters of tell us what how you're feeling what you think about beauty and destruction we didn't frame it in any more detail than that and we really just said think about these two things share your ideas go off into your own corners and do what you will yeah and, and check in to... with us every now and again so we know <laughs> yeah. how you're doing well we were glad we had you as a monitor because <laughs> yeah. we probably would have had our heads buried and like what no, isolation is uh, was the key element of this whole process. Mm -hmm. We had to do enough discussion to get things going, and then we had to throw everything out of the window and get to work. Yeah. The whole time I've been thinking of it in terms of like marinating. Yeah. We added, yeah. We added different elements in at the right stages along the way, and then you just put the lid on, stick it in the oven, and forget about it. Yeah. Well, I've got to forget about it. You yeah. guys had to fo had to labor <laughs> over it. Yeah. I kind of knew it was all okay. <laughs> on the last Zoom call when you were just giddy. <laughs> and you were oh, like yeah. smiling and you're like, it's gonna be so good. And I'm like, really? Okay. <laughs> well, if she feels that, then yeah. there's something really good that's gonna happen here. It was really fun. And I looked forward to our conversations because yeah, I, so. thought, I thought, yeah, I wanna know what he's thinking about, where he's at right now, and sure. um, just get a glimpse into it. It's because we do do our work in isolation. And so it's great to be able to have a conversation and have a goal. You know, going towards a show is a really powerful thing. Well, thank you both so much. You've created thank you, phenomenal Tessa. bodies of work for this. I think they came together beautifully. I'm so excited to share this show with everyone. We have lots of little things going up on the website in the weeks to come. This show will be up in person for three days in Chelsea and then in about a week, we'll have two viewing rooms up on Artsy and on our CBCA site, which will have lots of little extras from our collaborations that we're incorporating, some videos and such. And I just want to say thank you. It's been an absolutely phenomenal, exciting, unexpected process. And I'm so, I just feel so lucky that it ended where it did.